The battle lines have been drawn. The mining bill passed by the National Assembly recently is the catalyst. The Senate is once again fighting its battles at the Supreme Court on three key issues that it says are an affront to the success of devolution and an impediment to their mandate. The Senate resolves to immediately seek an advisory opinion from the Supreme Court on, among others, the following matters. One, the constitutional status of acts of parliament which have been passed by one house of parliament and assented to in contravention of article 1103 of the constitution. We take issue with two people, the speaker of the national assembly and the attorney general who advises the president to sign the bills. In a motion whose debate began today, Senate have taken issues with the legality of 46 bills assented to by the President without its input, the disregard by the National Assembly Speaker to consult the Senate Speaker before bills are tabled in the House and judicial rulings that they say are affecting their work. If for whatever reason you cannot agree, and indeed there have been many instances of lack of concurrence, then there must be a mediation committee. Before either house considers a bill, the speakers of the National Assembly and Senate shall, not may, shall jointly resolve any question as to whether it's a bill concerning counties and if it is whether it's a special or ordinary bill. There's no discretion in this, Mr. Speaker. An interpretation that could have far-reaching effects if the Supreme Court rules in favor of the Senate, which in essence will render 46 acts null and void. At the same time, the National Assembly and the Senate are engaging in a war of words as the National Assembly leadership accuses the Senate of jumping the gun, saying the contentious mining bill is said to be dispensed with by the National Assembly. The mining bill, National Assembly Bill Number 9 of 2014, is still in the custody of the National Assembly and has not been forwarded to the President or any other institution as is being alleged. On the other hand, and I want the Senate to listen to me, has flagrantly abused the Constitution by A, publishing and considering several bills which are clearly money bills. Money bills, as per the Constitution, must originate from the National Assembly. Could be now time has come for us to ask ourselves, do we need the Senate really? Do we need the Senate? Because it's duplicating what the National Assembly is doing. The National Assembly leadership has also taken issue with the Senate accusing them of squandering the taxpayers' money by hiring lawyers who are their cronies to represent them in court instead of using Parliament's legal office. The attempt by the Senate to resolve to hire external lawyers to file a case in court is yet another scheme by the senators not only to reward their cronies but also to, to defraud the public of colossal sum of money as, and I want to repeat it, as the Parliamentary Service Commission has already employed competent advocates who are capable of seeking appro appropriate orders from any court. In a battle reminiscent of the differences surrounding the Division of Revenue Bill 2013, the Senate says it will fight for its political space despite perceived intimidation and reluctance from the National Assembly and the courts. I have a record in front of me. I'm ready to table it before this House. A letter from the National Assembly it says this bill is not a bill concern concerning county governments within the definition of Article 1101 of the Constitution. The Senate's decision follows a two-day workshop held in Mombasa in which senators assessed the gains and challenges of devolution.